Let's add the wild boars to the Elm Hill City Zoo. In today's episode, we will build a very muddy habitat for the new wild boars added to Planet Zoo with the newest Eurasia Animal Pack. I couldn't wait to add those guys to the Elm Hill City Zoo because I feel like they fit perfectly to our zoo. And I really hope you guys will like the habitat that I created for them. <laughs> Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates, and welcome back to my channel. It's time for another episode of the Elm Hill City Zoo, and today, as I promised you guys, we will add a new animal from the newest Eurasia Animal Pack, and this will be the wild boar. The enclosure that we will build today for those wonderful pigs was fully designed by me, this time I didn't use any of the reference photos. Of course, I tried to look for some inspiration online, but I couldn't find anything that would be either fitting to our zoo or fitting to this area that I wanted to have the wild boars in, so I decided to come up with my own idea of this enclosure and I really hope you guys will like it. To me, it is so much more difficult to build in this game without using any reference photos. Every time that I am trying to build something that comes straight out of my head without using any ideas or any references, I feel like it's slightly less detailed than uh, the builds that I am, you know, referencing something. Uh, but this time I really tried to build something really detailed and really nice for our wild boars. And as I said, I hope you guys will enjoy it. This is the third animal from the Eurasia Animal Pack that we are adding to the Elm Hill City Zoo. We already added the mute swans and the wolverines. In case you guys haven't seen that, all of those videos are on my channel. Uh, and uh, yeah, today it is time to add the wild boars. I know that we are slightly behind when it comes to this newest DLC. There were eight new animals and <laughs> we are adding the third now uh, and I feel like like most of those are very much suiting to the Elm Hill City Zoo, uh, the wild boars are just perfect for it. I must say that when it comes to the wild boars, it is a very similar story that we had with the colored peccaries. Uh, I mean, I was saving this space for in the zoo for especially for wild boars because I had this feeling that they will eventually add them to the game. Uh, it was a very highly requested animal and it just made sense to add it in eventually. So yeah, the wild boar was finally added and I was able to fill this space in here that I was saving for this animal. If it wouldn't be added, I would probably end up using a mod or maybe just fill it the space with some nice like uh, plants and different landscape or anything. But I remember all of those comments when uh, the different DLCs were getting announced and a lot of people were like a bit like complaining complaining that there is no animal like a wild boar and the wild boar was also very high on the meta wish list and that's why I was suspecting that maybe one day we will actually have it in the game and here it is. I am very happy about this. This is one of the animals that I am very familiar to because they live all over the area where I live. I see them all of the time when I'm walking my dog or just driving my car and stuff. Uh, so yeah, really happy that they are here. We'll talk more about them in the later part of the video. This is another of those animals that sort of divided the community. Some of you were very happy about this. Some of you were not so excited because you thought that this is a very like common animal that you see all the time in the wild, just as me. But as I told you guys in the Mute Swan video, I am a strong supporter and advocate for uh, Zeus displaying not only like exotic animals but also your local wildlife to teach the kids, teenagers and also adults about the animals that live in your area and what they can do for the local wildlife conservation. Some people know a lot about animals like elephants, tigers, because those are those very iconic animals, but they don't know much about the deers, the roe deers, the wild boars that live just next to uh, the area where they live. Of course, if those are your local animals, because I know that people from all over the world, which is so mind-blowing to me, watch those videos. So maybe for you, the like Indian 
elephants and Sumatran tigers are your local wildlife and this is so so cool but uh, yeah I think that one of the main purposes of zoos is education and they also should educate people about the local wildlife. This is the episode number 101 when it comes to the Elm Hill City Zoo series. In case you guys haven't seen that, last time we celebrated the 100th episode uh, of the Elm Hill City Zoo by rebuilding the first habitat that I ever built, the seal habitat. And oh my god, thank you guys so much for all the views, for all the positive comments. You guys really enjoyed the video and I am so so grateful for that. I really appreciate it and uh, yeah the comments were just so amazing that's why I wanted to keep this hype <laughs> and I decided to uh, to uh, you know record the second episode of the Elm Hill City Zoo in a row I decided to speed things up with this series a bit by adding another animal uh, the wild boar that I really wanted to add since it was announced and if you guys haven't seen our celebration of 100 episodes uh, I'll put the link down in the description and on the screen right now so you can watch it, catch up and see what I did for those wonderful seals and how the entire area around their enclosure changed. Also, a lot of new people joined the channel recently, so it makes me so happy. Hello to all of you if you joined recently. Thank you so much. Uh, I assume that it has something to do with the new release of the console version for Planet Zoo, so that is so cool that you guys are joining and you like to, you know, watch those videos. So thank you so, so much. I am so happy to see our little channel growing. In the last episode, I also announced a new sponsorship opportunities for the habitats in the Elm Hill City Zoo. Basically, by becoming a member of the channel, you can choose the habitat that you want to sponsor. Uh, if you would like to sponsor a habitat in the Elm Hill City Zoo, become a member of the channel by clicking the join button down below and tell me what uh, enclosure you would like to sponsor. And after the announcement last time, we have five new sponsors. So one of them decided to sponsor this habitat, the one that I'll be building in this uh, in this next episode. Uh, so congratulations to Kira, uh, you are now a sponsor of the Wild Boar Habitat. We also have a new sponsor for the Wolverines, this is the Chewy Gaming 7-7. We have a new sponsor for the Red Pandas, Alex Dionysos, congratulations. We have a new sponsor of the Jaguar enclosure Agustin091 and the butterfly greenhouse is now sponsored by Mayor Yu. There are still some of the members of the channel who didn't choose their habitats so please contact me through the comments down below and I will add your plugs to the habitats of your choice and of course all of the new members are also welcome to join our Elm Hill City Zoo sponsor family. Okay, but let's finally talk about the enclosure. So as you guys can see, we sort of like finished the work on the front part of the enclosure. So when I was designing this habitat on my piece of paper, like doing my perfect little drawing for it, the drawing is absolutely hideous, like ugly. I have zero talent, but I sort of know what I was going for. I of course wanted to make this enclosure look cohesive with the rest that we have in this little like temperate area of our zoo. Uh, so in here we have animals like the red deer that is opposite to this enclosure. We have the new wolverine, we also have the red foxes, skunks, uh, we have the raccoons. So I wanted to make this area, as I said, feel like one like cohesive area of the zoo. Uh, so we were using a lot of wooden elements, we were also using a lot of trees and very like lush foliage around. And when it comes to those plants, I encountered a huge problem. <laughs> Because uh, all the wild boar habitats that I saw online, like all of them, they had zero plants. Like all of those plants are just, I assume, eaten by the wild boars. Uh, they can be very destructive. They dig with their snouts for the roots. So uh, I am sure that the plants have very hard time with them <laughs> being with them in one enclosure. Even in my local zoo, I yeah, I have my, in my local zoo actually a lot of wild boars. Uh, I know that their enclosure is just, you know, mud, some logs, some, some rocks, and that's basically all. So to balance it out, I decided to use a lot of different 
different plants, green plants around the whole enclosure. We will still have some plants in the enclosure itself because I just couldn't resist. I think that the plants make everything look so much better, but they will be sort of more like damaged and dry and so on. Uh, and around the enclosure will have a very beautiful lush foliage. So this is something that I was going for. I also decided to make this little like, uh, I don't know, wall in the front because I wanted to add a lot of mud and uh, water in this habitat, like very shallow water, because uh, those pigs, they love to spend their time in the mud, uh, like, you know, rolling around and stuff. And I wanted them to uh, come up close to the guests and do it. So I decided that I probably should use some reinforcement for the terrain in here, especially that the path for the guests is slightly like above the actual uh, enclosure because the water in this place could make the whole like terrain very moist so it could start sliding down and cause a lot of problems so I decided to use some concrete in here and also I used a lot of different plants between the guests and the actual barrier for the animals. The barrier for the animals in front is in fact I think the only thing that I took from some reference photo that I had on my Pinterest board and I think that it really looks cool in here uh, and then I went on to do some terraforming. I created a new custom fence that will surround the whole enclosure. Uh, this fence is sort of like a different version of the fences that we are using in this area, but I wanted to create something a bit lower because I didn't feel like this wild boars need such a high fence that we are using in here. I created the gates both for the keepers to enter the habitat, of course it is an implied gate, uh, and also a, a gate for the animals to enter the holding pen so that they can be separated if there's a need to separate them. And after that I added the water section to this habitat, like a very shallow water section so that uh, they, the wild boars, cannot really swim in there, they can just go in there and sort of lie in this water. Uh, and I added the uh, mud baths to it, I added three of them, I think four even, because one is not in the water section. I think that I actually talked about it in one of my previous videos, but I will repeat myself and say that I really am not a huge fan of the color of the mud buff. Like the mud buff is such a like cool enrichment item, like a really realistic one, something that the animals do in zoos in real life, they use those mud baths and they love it. Uh, and it is so cool that it was included in Planet Zoo, but the color of the actual mud is so not suiting to all of the biomes in the game. I think that it is only suiting to like a grassland biome, biome or anything, but in here it sort of like looks sort of like out of the place and I wish that we could recolor the mud but it is not an option in the game so what I did was try to blend it in uh, by creating my own mud <laughs> in a color that would be in between the color of the uh, mud when it comes to the terrain like paint uh, and the mud of the uh, of the enrichment item and for, to do that I used tons and tons and tons and tons of <laughs> of different decals so uh, the decal work in this episode it took me so much time, but I think that in the end it was so worth it. Uh, I think that the mat in here and the whole like water section is the main focus of the entire habitat. Uh, so I really focused on that. I used those moss decals and recolored them to this specific color that I think sort of suits both the mud bath and the other parts of the habitat. Uh, I used several different colors of it and blended the colors together. Uh, uh, to create some dimension and in the end the final product of the mat that we created in here is sort of convincing it sort of looks like mat i also added in some rocks some smaller logs i also added the mulch pieces here and there for some different like color and dimension uh, and i sort of did that all through the habitat there is a lot of mats in this enclosure but this was really inspired by the things that i saw while looking for inspiration for this those enclosures are always really plain and they have a lot of mud. Uh, I even decided to add more at some point. You guys can see that I added this small little pond of water and surrounded it with more mud uh, to make it more like convincing that the mud is not like only in one place of the habitat, it is in more places. While building this, I also took some inspiration for from one of my previous habitats, one of my favorite habitats that we've built in the Elm Hill City Zoo, the Red River Hawk Enclosure. 
And what I especially love about this habitat is the textures on the ground that we were able to achieve using different decal pieces and terrain paints. Uh, so this is something that I wanted to sort of recreate in here. As you guys could see, I also added those forage box for the wild boars. I think it is so important to add something like this for the pigs that use a lot of their time like foraging for food, like with their noses, like just looking for food. It is a perfect enrichment for them. And I sort of wanted to blend it in with the rest of the habitat. So uh, you guys often ask me how I do it. I will include maybe here a little tutorial on how you, what you need to set in your settings to be able to terraform around the enrichment items or barriers because I get those questions uh, practically every time that I do it. Uh, so there will be a small tutorial in the I don't know, corner of the screen or something. Uh, but uh, also you guys can often see me adding the path first before adding the enrichment and uh, adding path I also said this many times, but it sort of like locks the terrain. Uh, so after you add the enrichment items, the, they don't like flatten the terrain around it because they are locked by those paths. It is a really nice way of making sure that the terrain that you work on for probably some time won't get destroyed by just placing the enrichment items. So keep that in mind because it is very, very useful. I also created some custom shades, like sun shades or just those structures where the boars can just go in and hide from the sun. This is also something that I saw in a lot of their enclosures. Uh, I think that on the hot day, like this very exposed ground without any grass or anything can get quite hot. And maybe that's why they often get those things to be able to hide from the sun. Uh, so I added those as well. This is my custom project. And I also created the new version of the tree guard using the bicycle wheels. I don't know, I just found this piece by accident and I thought that it has a perfect size uh, to be just around a tree trunk. Uh, so I decided to turn them into tree guards and I think that they look really cool. I love those tree guards in here and I will be using them in my future habitats for sure. I also used a lot of different locks in this habitat for some, you know, details, decoration, because I I simply knew that I cannot use too much plants, uh, so I collected all of the logs that we used around the zoo and I brought them here and I also used this hollow log by ZSH Place. Uh, this is a really cool blueprint that you will find in the description of the video. They, the boars cannot go in there, but I saw in several habitats that they had some hollow logs, for example, little ones like to go in there, so that's why I decided to add it as well for those wonderful animals. When it was time to add the plants, I didn't want to go too like far with those. As I told you, I still added some because I wanted to have a little bit of this greenery, but uh, I added a lot of dry plants. I, I also added a lot of dead plants. So it sort of looks like the boars already destroyed a lot of plants in here. So you will see a lot of those like dry sticks sticking out of the ground in several places. By the end of the video, we'll also work on the shelter. Uh, I basically connected the shelter to the shelter for the red foxes. Uh, we use the same material, so I wanted to make it look like a one building because they are simply connected. And this time I will show you how I will do the stalls for them inside. So uh, I had some requests for that because I'm not showing you a lot of those things, but this time you will see how I am like doing a bit of the interior of the shelter. I also did some work around the enclosure of camera. Uh, I created those like structures in front of the habitat because I sort of couldn't find an idea for this area and I came up with an idea. I think it looks quite interesting and you guys will be able to see it all in the cinematic shots. Now, I know that in my recent social media posts, uh, I told you guys that in my next video, I will share with you the story of my two new pets, my two new badgies. Uh, but unfortunately, I tried. I already tried to record it twice. And this story is just... I just cannot do it under 10 minutes. So unfortunately, this video is a bit too short to do that, but I am sure that in the next video, I will have time to do this. Basically, I saved two badges from a certain death. So 
I have new pets. It was a bit unexpected, but uh, I am deep, deeply in love with them. Uh, my whole life is recently like turning around to birds that are living in my home right now. But it is such a sad story that I really wanted to share because I think it is so, so important for all the animal lovers. Uh, I'm sure if that if you are watching my videos, you are as well an animal lover. Uh, so uh, the next video that I will actually upload from Planet Zoo is uh, the new episode of the Desert Adventure Park. Uh, and as I told you guys in the next uh, episode of that series, we'll actually not build an enclosure, we'll build a restaurant. Uh, so maybe if that won't be too interesting for you, uh, like to see how I build a restaurant, not an enclosure for an animal. Uh, at least you will be able to tune in to hear about my lovely two badgies that I rescued and that recently joined my little twisted family consisting of a small little dog, a dash hound, a lot of fish, mainly cichlids, <laughs> and also a lot of cherry shrimps and other aquatic animals. And now we have flying animals in the house so uh, oh my god I really don't have time to be bored recently but I sort of love it I love when there's a lot of things going on and the budgies are keeping me on my toes all of the time so if you want to hear more about them make sure to tune in to the next video story about this but believe me that I really tried my friends really <laughs> they laugh at me that I have this amazing ability of making a short story long so that is one of those stories, uh, but I really think that it is so important that really opened my eyes to some of the things, but really more about this next time. Because I wanted to talk more about the wild boars in this video and how they get a really bad reputation that sort of is not their fault at all. It is still our fault as a lot of times when it comes to those situations. So basically, just as most of the pigs, the wild boars are really intelligent animals. And just like most of the animals, they are really food motivated. So they know how to get their food and how to make it the easiest for them, especially now during the winter time. And this basically mean, means go into the places where people live, because where there is people, there is food. Not only because they go through our trash bins, but they also go to the, for example, parks that we arrange in the city centers. Uh, this is a really easy way of for them to you know dig for roots because the ground is not so like hard as in a real forest it is easier for them to dig for roots and stuff uh, so they really start to go and interfere with our sort of world especially here in my country and it has become a such a huge problem because of course what happens are car accidents involving the wild boars there are unfortunately human attacks as well there was a really loud case recently in my hometown that was on the news around the whole country that a woman nearly died because of the wild boar attack she basically did some grocery shopping and she was walking home after doing those groceries with the bags in her hands like those transparent ones uh, and uh, it was also after several days of snowing so there's a lot of snow you know when there is snow it's harder for the animals to find food uh, so she stumbled upon a group of the wild boars and they saw that she had some vegetables in those uh, bags so what they did they wanted to just simply take those from her and she tried to fight back and that was a very bad decision she should just have like you no know, drop those bags and run away or something but she didn't want to let go and they attacked her and they uh, simply ripped her legs like open uh, she was able to crawl back into the grocery store the ambulance was called she almost died because she lost so much blood so yeah she almost died because uh, of the grocery shop shopping and some hungry wild boars it is so common for me to see them uh, i when i go to, with my dog for example in the morning before work 
I sometimes see some of them uh, when I go for a walk. I see the destroyed lawns by the uh, by the boars. So, and unfortunately, because their population is spreading so much, and because they are a sort of like a mild threat to humans, that they are destroying our parks and so on. The hunters are allowed to shoot them and to kill quite a lot of them yearly, which is so unbelievably sad to me because I know that, you know, this whole controlling population thing and so on is important, but to be completely honest, they were here first. We've built the towns on their territories where they thrived before us. Uh, and now we are surprised that they are coming into our like hometowns and so on. Especially that we give such a easy opportunities for them to find food in here. So it is so unbelievably sad to me uh, when I, for example, go for a walk with my dog and I see those plates like uh, watch out because it is a season of you know, shooting the boars or something. There's a, actually a lot of protests uh, here going on in my local area against that. Uh, like, I know that they want to force the government not to shoot them, but to, for example, sedate them, catch them and, you know, drive them somewhere uh, into like deeper forests and stuff like that. Uh, but I don't know if it will be successful. And tell me guys, what you think about this? Like, uh, what do you think the best solution would be for those animals because even though they are not endangered they are not threatened they have a big population in here i don't think that killing an animal is uh, like an ultimate solution like i know it's in the easiest one but we should be better than this right so yeah that was my rant about the sad story of the wild boars next time we'll have a bad stories about the budgies so i hope you will bear with me <laughs> And you won't get too depressed after watching my videos. Uh, okay, guys, so that is all that I have for you in this video. This time, I will also try to talk a bit more through the cinematic shots. So I hope you will enjoy them. I must admit that this habitat has turned out better than I expected. I especially love all the ground textures and the mud that I was able to create using the decal pieces. And I also think that adding this shallow water made it even more convincing. I think that our wild boars are really enjoying this habitat, they are roaming around it all the time, they are also playing in the mud a lot. The wild boar is such a beautiful model, I just love it so much and I am so happy that it was finally added to Planet Zoo. By the way, don't mind the unfinished building that is in the back of the habitat. This is our reptile house and we are still working on it. And in the next episode, we will actually be adding new reptile to this building. The wild boars of course also have their shelter, where they can spend the night or just hide from bad weather. I finished the entire interior of the shelter off camera and here you can see how it all looks. I also did some decorating in front of the habitat, I added those like interesting structures in different shapes, both to add something interesting in the middle of this path but also to give our boars some privacy from the main path. There will be still some cinematic shots, so don't go anywhere after I will finish my goodbyes. Okay guys, this is all that I have for you in this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. Give this video a big thumbs up down below if you enjoyed it. And of course, leave me a nice comment. Tell me what you think about the new habitat. If you guys would like to support the channel a little bit extra and become a sponsor of one of the habitats in the Elm Hill City Zoo, you can do it with the join button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!